All right. So first, I'd like to thank the organizing committee to give me the opportunity to present my work. So I'll talk about the phonon limited DC electrical conductivity for metals in a minute. First, I'll talk about the implementation, and then I'll show some results. We start from the relaxation time approximation, where the electrical conductivity can be expressed as 1.1. For metal, we can approximate the derivative of the Fermi direct occupation to obtain 1.2. Using the tetrahedron method, we can integrate over the Fermi surface. We can also evaluate the velocity tensors since the velocity is the derivative of the energy with respect to k point. So to calculate the conductivity, the only other part to calculate is the, life, the electron lifetime. To do so, uh, we'll need to compute the this imaginary part of the fang migdal self energy. We know that uh, the inverse lifetime is two times the imaginary part of the self energy. We can evaluate it using the CERTA or the MRTA approximation. The MRTA approximation is more accurate because we take into account an approximation of the backscattering term, which is the probability that an electron is scattered back into the state NK. Both of these are only approximation, and to get more accurate result, we should use an iterative solution to the Boltzmann transport equation, as Matteo has shown. Now, let's talk about the Abinet implementation. So first, what does it mean to use K-range? When we use K-range, uh, what we'll do is we'll will reduce the wave function file by only computing the states which are relevant to the conductivity. This is because only the states close to the Fermi level are relevant to the conductivity. When we don't use K-range, we'll start from a wave function file obtained non-self-constantly and from a DDB and DVDB file then we can directly calculate the conductivity. If we use K-range, we'll need to separate uh, the, the computation into three tasks. And the first, we'll read the wave function file obtained non-self-constantly, and we'll interpolate the, the eigen energy on a finer grid that we'll call the sigma grid. We write the information on uh, the k-range.nc file. On the second task, we we'll read the wave function file and the k-range file, and we'll do a non-self-constant calculation of the band structure to obtain a new wave function file, which take into account the finer sigma grid around the Fermi level. And finally, with this new wave function file, we can calculate the conductivity. So now, uh, to get accurate result using Abinet, we'll need to do some convergence study. First, we'll need to do convergence study on ECOT, on the coarse k-point grid, on T-smear, on the coarse q-point grid, on the non-self-constant k-point grid, and on a fine interpolate q-point grid. If we use K-range, we also need to do a convergence study on the sigma grid and on the interpolation method that I'll talk about later. Now, how can we start a calculation using ABIPI? Uh, we can do it in three steps. In the first step, we'll create a self-constant and a non-self-constant input. In the second step, we'll use ABIPI factories function to create a multi data set object. At this step, we can choose if we want to use K-range capabilities or not. And finally, we will create a conduct work object from this multi data set object. Um, if we already have the DDB and DVDB file compute, we can directly give the file path to, the, to this file. And if we need to compute them 
in the same workflow, we only need to give the phonon work in which we will calculate them. Once we have a, full, a workflow, it is uh, easy to start the calculation on your computer or on a, on a calculation server. Uh, I've written an example in the Abipy example directory, which is called run conduct work, if you want to start a conductivity calculation for metals. Now, let's look a bit more about the function that we use in Abipy. The factory function needs first the self-constant uh, self and a non-self-constant input, which are both dictionaries. It will also need the temperature where we, will, we want to calculate the electrical conductivity. It will need the key point grid of the DTB file. It will need the finer key point grid that will interpolate during our calculation and sigma range, which is the interval around the Fermi level where we will calculate the conductivity. From these, we can obtain a workflow uh, as we can see. The first and the first two work, we calculate the DDB and DVDB file. If we already add them, we can start directly at uh, the last work, which is conduct work. We do three calculation in conduct work. The first one is a ground state self-constant calculation to obtain the density file. The second work is a non-self-constant calculation to obtain the wave function file. And finally, we calculate the conductivity in the last work. If we use k-range, our factory function will need two more parameters, the sigma grid and the interpolation. The interpolation has four parameters. The first one is the interpolation method. Uh, for now, there's only the stars function that are implemented into AppyPy. The second parameter is the number of stars per key point. And the last two parameters are normally not used, but they are there to do a filtering, which will remove uh, artificial high frequency oscillation that may appear when there's bands crossing near the Fermi level. If we look at our workflow, we now have five tasks. The, the first two tasks are the same, the self-constant and the non-self-constant input. Then we do uh, the interpolation on using star function on the sigma grid. Then we'll do the non-self-consistent a band structure calculation to obtain the new wave function file. And finally, we calculate the conductivity. Now let's look at some results. As a reference, I've used the experimental result from the Ashcroft and Mermin. I've compared these with two simulations that I've done. The first one is a test that I've had into Abinet test suit, and the second is uh, with higher convergence parameters. We can see that at room temperature and higher, so at 273 and 373 Kelvin, we get really good agreement between our simulations and the experimental result. But we can see that at low temperature, so 73 Kelvin, we get a big discrepancy between both. This is because as we get to lower and lower temperature, we need to have finer and finer k-point grid to obtain a converged result. In our case, the 64 grid that we use is only converged at room temperature and not at lower temperature. We will see the same phenomena in a few slides on a different structure. So, uh, Nesrin Poussadoun from my research group has studied the electrical property of a bidimensional titanium carbon fluorine alloy. From previous studies, we found these converged parameters. I want to talk a bit about sigma I range, which is the interval around the Fermi level. So we have negative values. Those indicate that we're working with metals. 
In the case of a structure with a band gap, we will instead use positive value. The first parameters is the range below the Fermi level. The second is the range over the Fermi level. And the third is obviously the units. Why did we use a value of 0 0.09 electron volt? This is because we only need to consider the energy of phonon around the Fermi level. And in our case, when we look at the phonon band, we see that the IS energy is 0 0.09 electron volt for phonon. Before I show you the result of the conductivity, I want to talk about the components of the conductivity. So if you recall from the first slide, we multiplied three terms, the velocity tensor, the lifetime, and the derivative of the Fermi Dirac occupation. By looking at the derivative of the Fermi occupation, we can clear see, clearly see why the, only the states close to the Fermi level contribute to the electrical properties. Uh, we can also see that in this structure, the lifetime peaks at the Fermi level, which is a really good indicator for conductivity. If we look at some actual result of the conductivity, we can see that uh, uh, first we fixed a 64 grid and we exchange the fine Q point grid. We find out that a 32 Q point grid is converged at uh, every temperature. Then we fix the fine interpolate Q point grid and we look at the fine Q point grid. We find out that at room temperature, our 64 grid is converged, but as we get to lower and lower temperature, our result gets worse and worse. This is exactly the same phenomena that has happened in our previous study on copper. To get more accurate result, we will need to use finer K-point grid. To conclude, we can get really good agreement with experimental result considering only final limited conductivity when we're working at room temperature. And uh, we can use ABIPI conduct work to automatize most of these calculation. And one of the improvement will be to solve the Boltzmann transport equation iteratively as uh, Matteo have shown a bit in his presentation. Many thanks for your attention. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, are there any questions? Uh, um, I don't see any. Well, I, I was a. Uh, I, I I've been uh, I've been looking at several band structures the whole day. So uh, I, I saw your band structure of the two D metal, and and I saw that there are some uh, some dips uh, near the. Uh, yeah, here. Yes. So the, the this is a two D metal, right? Yes. So uh, it, it's it's kind of funny that uh, I don't know if you if you saw that the the the, the, the talk uh, a, a few a couple of hours ago. I was discussing these uh, um, these these imaginary bands near the near gamma. Uh, yeah. And and uh, what we found uh, in, uh, in 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 a very different system, like uh, 3D piezoelectric insulators, is that uh, these uh, uh, are artifacts of uh, electrostatics, uh, and we could uh, fix them with quadrupoles. But this is a this is clearly a case where uh, you cannot fix them with quadrupoles because this is a metal, so the, the everything is uh, in principle is uh, is screened, right? Yeah. Uh, so we think that these. Uh dip below the formula below the energy is because we're using a two course k point q point grid yeah and it is uh, due to the due to the interpolation okay 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 it's a matter of interpolation it, actually it does disappear once you get to eight by eight uh, q point grid these these bands are very delicate because they have essentially zero dispersion near the gamma point so, uh, okay, thanks. Now, now I see a question from Xavier Gonz. Uh, he's asking, uh, 
uh, is saying that with the Boltzmann transport equation, it is likely that the sampling will need to be even better than presently. Uh, will this, uh, is asking whether this will be even uh, more problematic at room temperature. Okay, um, so will the convergence be harder to obtain using the iterative solution? Is it the question? Or... I guess so. I, I guess if this is, is um, well, I don't know, Xavier, if you want to. Yes, yes, indeed. I, 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 you have shown that at 77 Kelvin, things were already problematic, really problematic, apparently, while it was fine at room temperature. But we have seen also in another talk that the BTE needs even more uh, finer sampling. Well, uh, that's uh, what Matteo uh, said. Uh, so, what? Uh, how much uh, capability have you to improve uh, your K point and Q point sampling beyond what you have already? Um, actually, these calculations were not that much uh, hard. Were, were not that much computationally intensive. Uh, for the two D material, we did not even use the K range capabilities. We've directly used. Uh, the non self constant uh, k point grid without using k range. So we could definitely use a finer k point grid by using k range. Uh, I, I can't tell if uh, how hard it will be to obtain good result at room temperature using the iterative solution because uh, it will need some uh, testing and I have not worked uh, with it yet. Yes, obviously, yeah, yeah. 